Stick to the end of the video for all the details. This is the real reason why he didn't show up in person to give his course in Barcelona. So, again, I'm chasing you. Te estoy buscando, cabrón. Pero te escondes, way. Okay? You're hiding. You know it. You're a big... Fan number one said, at the end, you're going to go, Sensei. I'm sorry. I imagine you'll do a live video about it. Second fan, why didn't you go in person? It's been 10 days and the fake Sensei still hasn't answered. I changed my trip four times while in Spain. I ended up in Madrid. Came to Spain two weeks ahead of time. And I basically lost my patience waiting for Bruno Orozco. In the big cities, I'm in my natural habitat. I feel at home. For all the details on my brief with Bruno Rosco, the back and forth I've had with him, stick to the end of the video. So, what's up, guys? I'm here in Spain. You guys may wonder why I'm here in Spain. Well, I have a beef with Bruno Rosco. Some of you I might know, I made videos on him. And he's had a big mouth saying, you know, for me to go and see him in person, um, talking about that, that uh, it's convenient that people think they're superior than him. I don't even know whether that would be convenient. I mean, it's not convenient, and the guy doesn't fight, we all know that, but since he had a big mouth saying for me to go see him there in person, the dumbass had the, uh, the nerves to come and teach a course here in, in Barcelona, so I booked a flight. To Reus, it's about an hour and a half right, drive yeah. Yeah. from Barcelona. Travel time. Uh, I got to Reus, and I got here two weeks ahead of time, so I have enough time to catch him outside the address that he's supposed to come in person to teach this course. Now, even though Reus has amazing cakes, amazing coffee, it's an amazing city. I had a lot of fun walking around, getting to know a little bit of the city. I just about had enough of it after two days. So I booked a train to Madrid from Reus. Took me about seven or eight hours to get there. I wanted to see the country, you know, the lakes, nature, the farms, the little towns. And I also got to see some of the ugly things like this right here. But I basically got to see a lot of Spain in my eight hours on my way in the train. Finally got to Madrid and already loving it. Uh, Bruno Rosco is a pussy because he knows I'm here. I didn't post it on the internet. I didn't post online that I'm here. But um, the thing is... Even though I didn't post it, I did tell a YouTuber or two, I told a TikToker. So I think somebody must have told him that I'm here. I also gave Bruno Rosco two hints. One is right here in my community, where I basically had a back and forth with another YouTuber. And I said in their comments there that I will be doing bouncing in Spain next. Second hint I gave him, which was actually four, I hashtagged at combatives in each and every video i made on them which is four videos and i will link all those videos at the end of this video and in the comments below for you guys to check those out so he gets a notification when somebody does a hashtag at combatives i did all of these things right when i arrived to rose this is the real reason why he didn't show up in person to give his course in barcelona so again i'm chasing you te estoy buscando cabrón pero te escondes way okay you're hiding you know it you're a bitch so the next video guys Catch you later. Here's the extras. I had a return flight on the 6th. I figured, you know, three days he gets there the 3rd. From the 3rd to the 6th will be enough time. I got to Reus only an hour and a half away, but I ended up going further away from Barcelona, all the way to Madrid. Now, once I got to Madrid, I decided I let him settle in for three days, and I booked a hotel from the 6th to the 9th. I booked the 6th to the 9th in Barcelona while in Madrid with the plan of making uh, a flight reservation by the time I knew for sure he was there. And I'm glad I did it this way. I didn't make a plane reservation to go back to Barcelona. It didn't even make sense to go back there because I had already missed my flight leaving near Barcelona back to Brussels. So it would have just made more sense to just leave from Madrid back to Amsterdam. So that's what I did. While in Madrid, I basically booked three nights, cost me... 279 euros with 85 cents. I'm glad I did it this way because I would have been spending 500 euros if I had booked a flight as well. I'm really glad that I planned my trip this way, guys. I made so many new friends down there, so many new connections, uh, you know. Um, 
it's just so easy to connect with people there. I mean, six million people, almost seven million people in Madrid. You know, you just cannot compare that to somewhere like Barcelona. Um, and I'm, I'm glad I planned my trip this way, even though I did waste some money uh, booking a, a flight to Barcelona to go see him and uh, paying for a hotel to go see him there later and all that stuff. I'm glad I did it this way. You know, I made friends with Colombians, with Cubans, with uh, other Mexicans, a lot of Mexicans in Madrid. So, you know, I just really felt at home in Madrid and went on a few dates, also met most of the bouncers in the city, just walked up and talked to them, made sure I knew everything about how to get a license to work doors, how, how to go about doing private security work, how to go about being a bodyguard in Spain. Turns out you have to be at least 170 of height. I did not know this. Good thing I'm 174. Anyways, all this is besides the point. I just really looked into how to work there and I have the option now of having a full-time job there. So this is a really good option to have. And now last but not least, here comes what you guys waited for, the ones that waited till the end to know about the whole beef with me and Bruno Rosco and the back and forth. Here is that extra for you guys. Enjoy till the next video, guys. Thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. Here are the extras about how my beef started with Bruno Rosco and the back and forth I've had with him and what he's told me and what I've told him. Thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. Alright guys, here it goes. So, I found out about Bruno Rosco because I was on Viking Samurai's channel and Viking Samurai on videos that I was in, he had the martial arts journey guy on. So I researched the martial arts journey guy and I saw the videos he did with Bruno Orozco back when he didn't even speak any English at all. He had a translator back when he was skinny before he started taking steroids, uh, before he deleted his first channel because of the fake stuff he had on there that he realized it sucked and he deleted his first channel with the excuse that a cartel was after him, which is BS because if he had a cartel after him, they would have fined him regardless if he deletes the channel or not. Cartel members know where everybody's at. They have contacts with the police. The police, they're all corrupt in Mexico, all of them. 99.8% of the cops are corrupt in Mexico, okay? Not counting the ones that do private security work, that is. If they wanted to find him, they would find him, period. If you had a problem, they would have got him already. He would have had to move out of Mexico, as I did. I moved out of Mexico for a reason. You guys want to see that video of the fight of me with a cartel member? Click on the link above. That's not really the reason I left, but that was one of the reasons that I left. That said, it's BS that he had a cartel after him. That is just complete and utter BS. His techniques are complete and utter BS. The guy has never fought. He's fake. He's as fake as they come. He's faker than Frank Dukes, I dare say. He made uh, he made fame by talking about Detroit urban uh, survival tactics. Um, this guy uh, that got really big on the internet, he made videos talking S about him, exposing him. Yet at the same time, if you guys watch his videos, after he exposed him, he's changed his dojo to almost exactly the way that that guy's dojo is. It just shows the level of fakeness that he is, you know. He talks S about him, but at the same time, he admires him because his dojo is just like his now. It's a great mat, it has weapons on the, on the, on the wall, just like the Detroit Urban Combatives or whatever the hell his name is. Same type of dojo he's got now. I told Viking Samurai to ask the martial arts journey guy if we could do a video together since he was in such a journey of finding out what works. I wanted to do a video with him, but he didn't want to do a video with me apparently because uh, uh, he wasn't doing any videos with YouTubers at the time, yet he did videos with other people, which uh, whatever, it's all good. But then uh, I couldn't keep myself from commenting on Bruno Rosco's videos and I commented basically, I told people there to follow my channel that I'm a bouncer from Acapulco, a bouncer in Holland, and that I have the experience which he does not have. So. After I, made this vi after I made this comment on him, he actually responded immediately and said, What? Ha ha ha. A bouncer in Acapulco, Mexico. Who's the one lying? I was like, you little bitch. You know what? Why don't you go on my Facebook? Check out my pictures. Check out the recommendation letters, my badges, my diplomas, all the photos I have at the clubs in Mexico, at the clubs in Holland. And not everybody's like you. Not everybody's as fake as you are. There's a thing about fake people like him. They tend to think everyone is like him. No, dude. Not me. I don't ever lie. I won't ever post any lies on YouTube ever. Everything you guys see on my pages are 110% true. Everything I say is 110% true. How fake is Bruno Orozco? Well, he claims he was a cop. He claims he was in the military. He claims he was a bodyguard. All lies. Okay, it's all lies. He was never any of these things. Okay, I've checked up on him. I've asked around. The private security world is a small world. The cop world is a small world. In both of these worlds, I know people in Acapulco and in Mexico City. 
is BS. I've checked up on it. He's never done it. And a hint you guys can have, I mean, I know in the States, the U.S., even in Spain, even in, here, even in Holland, you can have tattoos as a police officer, as a private guard, even as a, as, a, as a bodyguard probably. In Mexico, not allowed. You will never get a job working law enforcement or anything in government or anything private if you have tattoos all over the place. Just complete and utter BS. If he says he was a bodyguard, where? For who? Who did you work for? Para quien trabajaste, güey? Who did you work for? Nobody, okay? What's police department? Where? When? What city? Also BS. Where? I want to know where the time. If, if it's not BS, you should make a video responding to this. All right? Military. What military? If it was in the Mexican army? I highly doubt it. He wouldn't have made so many mistakes in his shooting videos. All right? So that's all BS. On top of that, he wears a karate gi with a, with a, with a black belt. I don't know why. He wears an Aikido gi. I don't know why either. He's not a, a karate expert. He's not a karate black belt. He's not Aikido. Last time I checked, he's combative. So why is he wearing traditional uniforms when he is combative? Then, th then he'll be talking about that the cage will never be a, a, a place where you will learn how to defend yourself on the street. He'll say that the, uh, that defending yourself on the street is not limited to knowing how to street fight. So what works then? The bullshit that you teach, buddy? Poking the eyes, poking the throat, pulling hair, going for the groin. I mean, come on. I mean, that that's, that's just uh, stuff for poor people. Only poor people that don't know how to defend themselves pay for these courses. Rich people know better. Rich people hire people that have experience, that have a reputation, that they know won't back down when shit hits the fan, okay? These are the people that are hired for private security work, okay? People like him don't get hired for this. It's just, it's just how it is. Private security uh, uh, experts get hired by the richest people. I've, I've worked for some of the richest people, okay, guys? That baby, I used to guard some of the richest people of Mexico and anyone who would come in there is like at the highest level of income and status and power in Mexico. So uh, that said, that said, rich people aren't stupid. They know who they are gonna get to protect them. It's poor people that are dumb, that wanna feel safe, that take these courses without putting in the effort of actually knowing how to fight. I'll end this video with this guys, swimming. I'll give a swimming example, okay? Imagine you go to a swimming uh, instructor and he says, oh, we don't go in the water. You know, we don't go in the water. We, we sit on the chair, we do all the movements in the chair. We don't ever go in the water. What's gonna happen to all those students that only practice outside of the water? Even that instructor, if he's never jumped in the water himself, what's gonna happen when you actually jump in the water? You're gonna drown. Now, fighting is like a hundred times more difficult to learn than swimming. You have to deal with the fear, the adrenaline. You will never learn to fight if you don't fight, if you don't spar hard. Knife sparring also doesn't count. I have a stab wound here. You know, a little tiny wound on your forearms and your nerves, your tendons get cut if it's deep enough and you won't be able to move your hand. It will be non-functional. So this idea of get caught while trying to grab a knife is also BS. Knives are very dangerous. You should never be going trying to grab a knife, okay? All this idea of uh, surviving a knife fight or surviving a knife attack, it's like when two people have a knife fight and they really are intending to hurt each other, this is how it goes. The one that loses dies on the spot and the one that wins dies a few minutes later or in the hospital. And that's it. I'll end it with this. Uh, one of the things he also said when we had the back and forward was that, um, um, after I told him not, not everybody's like you, um, he said, took him like 30 minutes to respond. I guess he checked out my Facebook and my social media and maybe he asked around, but then he responded with this. This was his final response to me. The last thing he's told me, he said, and I quote, do all the videos you want on me. I don't care. He said, um, all publicity is good publicity. Is it really? Here's some publicity for you, buddy. Eres un miedoso. Till the next video, catch you later.